Covington Entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Culver. And I'm Lucas Tim. Woo! Hi, everyone. Woo! Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Yay! Happy. So exciting. Cheers. Cheers. Last oh. show of the summer. Aww. We're finally drinking on Bill Brunch, guys. It's been a dream. Honor to work with all of you. Yes. All of you. And we're quitting. And we're and quitting. This is, this is our last show, guys. This is our final show. Yay. I'm just having an excuse right. to drink now. No, we're going on a little hiatus next week, so this is our last show of this summer, and it's been really fun. Mimosas at brunch. This is my favorite drink to get at brunch. Uh, oh, yeah? Well, as opposed to what, a Bloody Mary? A yeah. Bellini? Bloody Mary, a Bellini. A Bellini. Bellini. Yeah. A Bellini. Oh, yeah, no. I just drink straight tequila, so. Damn. <laughs> That's not problematic no, 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 at all. No, what time of day, Brittany's like, this is brunch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I actually read such a funny tweet last night. Yeah. Chrissy Teigen tweeted out saying that she would be so down to be a part of the Housewives as long as she didn't have to participate in the reunion. <laughs> I love that. You, what do you think of that? I, I would I be think willing. She's serious. Yeah, I would be willing to sacrifice her in the reunion for her in the series. Me yeah. too. Any day of the week. I would can watch she Skype the in shit out of that. She yeah. could just Skype in. That way, she doesn't have to sit on the couch in well, a ball gown. Right. That's what she said. Because she said, yeah. I can't sit in a ball gown for twelve hours. I actually think Chrissy Teigen would be so funny because she's offered such great commentary, and I think. What actually Housewives is missing is that like the viewer's voice. So like yeah. I think Carol Radwell used to be a couple seasons ago where like they go to everything, but they kind of don't engage fully because they're not so crazy, but they offer the best commentary. Yeah. So I think Chrissy would actually be really great on it. She would be so fun. Which and it would be some real star power. Yes. I mean, think about what it would do. Like they have Denise Richards doing the Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, but this is like a real... Well, would she be it. New York? Do they live in New York? Yeah, right. Oh, oh. no, she, I think she would also be Beverly Hills. Oh, even better. Oh, wow. I, but I would want her to be. A, I would want to be in New York. I she, feel like it would be distracting. Like I think she should just get her own show because otherwise, true. I feel like the edits will just be about her, and the other women will be like, yeah. "We don't even have an intro anymore." Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised she doesn't have a show. <laughs> yeah, I'm because her, she's so public on her You're social. So more than any other celebrity, really, she shares yeah. her children. Like, yeah, they John do the Pampers and Chrissy, That would be a great reality show. I'm surprised E has not picked that up yet. Yeah, E, are you listening? Yeah, what what are Housewives tagline be? Um, oh, good question. Like, I, I just tweet. Everybody yeah. loves it. <laughs> it would just be know. her face in the Golden Globe. Just yeah. like, <laughs> that's it. You know what she means? I, mean? I can't get? believe I'm here. Yeah. I mean, she has the strongest brand mm -hmm. of anyone I know, though. She could tweet anything. And anything. She's like, I'm out of toilet paper. And people are like, oh, relatable. Yeah. Oh, my God, I haven't wiped my ass in 10 years. And you're like, really? <laughs> are you sure you're not making that up just to connect with Chrissy? Yeah. Oh, man. So true. Yeah. Well, let's keep putting out vibes. Anyway. Fingers it crossed. Happen. Yeah. On other TV news, um, the longtime fan favorite TV show, The Big Bang Theory, is officially coming to an end. The upcoming t season 12 will be the last of the CBS hit, si hit, hit, sorry, hit sitcom. But the producers <laughs> promise that the series finale will deliver in the most epic way possible. Will it? Will it? Yeah, I don't know. What's so it's been on for 12 years, going to be on for 12 years. And Long it's going out with a bang. Yeah. Big bang. Oh. Yep. Oh, but 12 years, 12 years, um, wow. It's the longest running multicam ever. Yeah. The ratings are, everyone knows this already. It's the number one show on TV, but I don't. I've, okay, I've never seen it. I've never seen this it. This is what I have to say about it. I didn't know <laughs> that, so Jim Parsons on Big Bang Theory plays Sheldon. Yes. yes. And there's the show Young Sheldon that everyone mm -hmm. makes fun of, myself included. I had no idea that that was in relation to the show Big Bang Theory. I just thought people were make, making fun of it because there was a little kid named Sheldon. You were the only one confused. <laughs> only one, yeah, only, only one. one. The only one confused I think that. everyone knows CBS knows that like Big Bang Theory is Sheldon. Sheldon. I just yeah. thought it was it's funny great. that they were specifying that he was young too. Like, <laughs> I thought it was like, he was like a really sophisticated, like sort of like old little kid named Sheldon. And everyone's like, young Sheldon. Like, yeah. Well, he is <laughs> sort of though. He's like this very, he's a genius. So he's kind of like this quirky little kid. Yeah. Okay, but so you know. your instincts were right. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to be but it's a, sp it's a spin off of Big Bang. Yeah, while I never watched this show, I do think it is a testament to Chuck Lorre. I don't particularly love Chuck Lorre's brand of comedy, but he has made so many hits Mike and Molly, yeah. uh, Two and a Half Men. He even worked on Dharma and Greg. And so when you look at him as like a showrunner and the shows he's able to create right. and how well they are received, I think that's really impressive, even if it doesn't really appeal to everyone. No, of course. Yeah. The show, it made a ton of money for CBS. The actors all made around a million dollars. An episode. An episode. And I think that's actually one of the reasons why it's ending, is because. Um, when they after season ten, when they, they negotiate, <laughs> they pitch it. Warner Brothers, CBS, like we got nothing. Left. Um, no, but uh, when they negotiated contracts for two more seasons, eleven, twelve, it took such a long time, and the main stars had to take pay cuts, so the other actors could get pay increases. Mm -hmm. That they were like, we don't want to do this again because yeah. yeah. it's going to be such a hard. I am actually really sad because I am a huge Big Bang Theory fan. I've watched every single episode. I love it so much. It's been out for twelve years, and I feel like it's helped me grow as a woman and as a comedian. And 
Do, are you guys believing it? No. <laughs> no. But you're so <laughs> sincere. I'm like, I know you're she's such a good actor. No way. I was like, I've never seen a goddamn episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather light myself on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad it's ending. I hope that it ends with the building they live in. I assume they all live together on that fucking couch. I hope yeah. it just blows up. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I, it was believable, but I already knew from no, past conversations. No, I think we should end on that joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, big news in the world of K-pop. Korean boy band BTS has just released their highly anticipated third studio album, Love Yourself Answer. Answer is the final part of the group's Love Yourself series. Here to talk about the new BTS album launch and all things K-pop is Billboard's K-pop columnist, Jeff Benjamin. Woo! Woo! Hey, Lucas. Hello, nice to meet you, Jeff. Finally, yeah. Hey, Jeff. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Yeah, hello. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Woo. We have so many questions. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm ready. I'm a mimosa. Yeah. 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 So cheers. Well, we're, where's the little yeah, cheers? cheers. We're Thank drinking cheers. today. Yeah. Have you guys it's seen K-pop. iTunes? Number one, BTS. That's so amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Did you predict that was going to happen? I, I knew they were going to do well. That They've had several number one albums at this point on US iTunes, but they're like taking over the top 10 songs. They're, they've done a really great job, so yeah. cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers. I saw your tweet too, there's another K-pop band that's releasing an album and you were like, they could go one and two, which would be amazing because neither album is in English. Oh, I was actually referring to Azuna. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the reggaeton. Oh, the reggaeton. Yeah, oh, okay. but I mean, how amazing is that? International music is yeah. so big right now, especially in America. I'm just so proud that like Latin music is so big, K-pop is so big. So I don't know. It just kind of warmed my heart that like maybe these two, you know, two uh, non-English albums could take over the top spots. I um I'm curious what sort of special quality you think it is that BTS possesses that has allowed them to sort of break into the mainstream in a way that I don't know other K-pop bands have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and I think um, the BTS fans, uh, ARMY, as, as they're known, will, uh, will definitely. <laughs> Are you in an ARMY? Uh, I'm a fake ARMY. I support the ARMY because I think they're just like such a good fandom. They are, they they're are. They're so respectful and sweet and like very positive. I love that. Yeah, and, and that's kind of something that I think is really, really special about BTS is that, you know, for the longest time, I think pop music, K-pop especially, gets this kind of unfair tag of, of sort of being superficial or just on the surface. But BTS always really made it a point to be part of, a, to have societal mm-hmm. issues, things that go deeper than just pop music, you know, talking about their mental health issues, politics, um, society, things that they're really going through and things that I think especially Western fans and people in America really connect to in that way. Yeah. Plus, their dance moves are really great. I mean, yeah. Have you <laughs> yeah. seen Have you seen the videos or have you seen the choreography? It's just you know, it, it blows my mind every time. And and they're just such hardworking guys. Yeah, um, like they don't really have social lives. They're not allowed to date, right? At all. Oh, I mean, that's like kind of like a, a K-pop, you know, uh, yeah. unwritten rule is, is sort of that. Um, yeah, you you don't really, you know, they've been working really hard on their their art and mm-hmm. their uh, for their fans. And they're going on tour, right? They are Starting, going yeah. on tour. I think their world tour actually starts this weekend. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, you guys. But um, yeah, it starts in Seoul. They're going to be coming here to America. The biggest mm. K-pop tour I think this country has ever, ever seen. They're going to wow. be playing um, City Field, wow. which like, you know, take away the K-pop tag. Even. Yeah. Think about, you know, who plays, you know, huge stadiums like that. We're talking Justin Bieber, Beyonce and Jay-Z, mm-hmm. Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift. Take away the K-pop tag for a second. You know, these are these are huge. This is a huge pop act, huge right. pop phenomenon in that way. Yes, yeah, so I think it's kind of it's quite significant. You were saying in the beginning these international artists kind of infiltrating the American mainstream music, which is like kind of unheard of in the, at least in the past few years, ten years maybe. So, and you were just talking about the K-pop, the themes. I'm not, I don't know a lot about K-pop, but I didn't know they explore all those kind of like you know politics mm-hmm. and and develop, you know all those very intense kind of themes sometimes in their music. Yeah, of course, and you know, of course, there's love songs, of course, yeah. there's party songs. You got to have that in, in any kind of music. But yeah, BTS has really been love special. songs are like I wish I could date someone. <laughs> no, that's that boy band pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All their songs. Do you know that boy band? Yeah, they're kind Aren't of the they? emo boy band. Yeah, yes. they're so sad. I feel so bad for them. Like, we should try to get them dates. Because listening to their music was depressing to me, and I haven't been on a date in forever. I know, me neither. But, uh, but yeah, no, you know, definitely, you know, lots of, I think BTS has been really special, and not even mm-hmm. that they're necessarily even the first band to talk about these deeper issues, but they've really made it a point to, to put themselves, put their experiences, put whatever they're going through to kind of be a little more relatable in that way. 
So this is a picture of BTS. I want you to take me through kind of like your favorite members. And oh. also like, who's like the Justin Timberlake? You know, who's gonna like break out Ooh. of this? There's so, so many of them. Who's gonna break out and stab the others in the back? <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. I mean, first off, there's only seven of them. There's not that many. That's a Real Housewives cast. That's yeah, a lot. That's, yeah. No, I think, I think that they're very manageable. And what's so, I think, really great about this group is that it really is tough to say who who right. is, because I think they're a really, really strong group in yeah. so many ways. You know. BTS has never officially done uh, solo releases mm -hmm. or, or even splintered off in different splinter groups. Uh, some of the members, some of the rappers actually partic particularly have done um, solo mixtapes. Okay. Um, oh, so cool. they've kind of come the time to do something a little on the side, but for the most part, the group has stayed intact. And I think that's really special. Yeah. Um, RM is in the middle right there with the yellow t-shirt. He uh, is the leader of the group. Okay. Okay. He, um, he's uh, he's uh, fluent in English. He's uh -huh. been on tracks with like Wale and Fall Out Boy. Oh, wow. I don't even know if these like necessarily got on your radar, but he's done a really great job of kind of helping expand the group's yeah. mm. image. And he always refers to himself as RM of BTS. So gotcha. keeps, the, keeps the group intact. No Justin Timberlake, yeah. no Beyonce <laughs> situation. Who's the best dancer then? Who's the best dancer? Oh man, again, you guys are gonna get me in trouble. I know. Okay, <laughs> or somebody who's a, just a real stand -up. Yeah, I mean, all the way on the right there, J-Hope. J-Hope's yeah. kind of known as the standout dancer. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I also think um, Jameen, who's right next to him in the blonde hair, is also really, really strong. But J-Hope, like, if you've watched any of the red carpet interviews right. or, or anything like that, he just, like, will bust it out. Like, he'll ask, like, <laughs> how are you guys feeling? And he'll just start dancing. Like, he expresses himself through dance in that way. That's how so. Lucas is. Yeah, and really? I really do. Go yeah. for it. He's, got some He's just moves. always doing body rolls when, when I finish this mimosa. Questions. I will. Same. <laughs> um, so I, I'm curious, like since we're talking about like the famous boy bands and girl groups of, in America, and we all know how they came together. How did BTS come together? Because it seems quite significant. They, like you said, like they seem a very cohesive, very positive group. Like for seven guys to come together, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, I think we all remember. You know, uh, it's sort of almost an old school concept at this point. Right. But when you know agencies or studios right. would kind of um, piece together different groups and kind of form them in that way. BTS also, they were created by their record label, Big Hit Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, they hold auditions, they train for years and years mm -hmm. to even get the chance to debut as part of uh, these bands, and, and that's standard across all K-pop um, for the most wow. part. And, and in the end, the, the seven-member lineup ended up uh, being the strongest in the end, and that's what they chose to debut BTS as. Um, but yeah, they, they I, I think that's something that K-pop fans in particular really connect with is mm -hmm. because they see that these you know, kids, they're really kids at the time that they mm -hmm. debut. I think the youngest member was a very young teenager at that time. Jungkook, he's, uh, he's where is he? He's uh, right there in the black hair and kind of making a face in the, uh, yeah. in the photo. But you know, they, um, they really identify with this struggle of really working hard. You know, I think we all, you know, studied so hard in school or whatever. They're they're studying. They're trying to debut. Wow. They're working on their singing, choreography, trying to learn different languages at the time. I think that that hard work, that struggle, is really something that a lot of K-pop fans identify with. Yeah. So we know they're getting big here, but how big are they really around the world? Like, what countries are they just like? Oh, the Beatles yeah. in. I mean, you could really. I mean, at this point, take your pick right. because. It, and and it's been interesting because they actually weren't, they, it took a while for Korea to actually catch up to, to the international uh, attention that BTS was getting. They held, I think, two tours here in America in 2015 before they really blew up um, in their home country. And, and they've done so well in Japan. They're kind of reinstating another Korean wave in Japan. They've done so well in South America, uh, Latin America. Oh. I actually wrote a piece uh, about their concert in Chile where um, they, they broke broke the sound barrier, mm -hmm. or like where it became actually dangerous to, <laughs> wow. to actually be around that sound because the fans were screaming so wow. loud. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, so you can just imagine, I mean, they've done they've done amazing, and I'm, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm, for those of us who don't listen to K-pop all yes. the time, what are some BTS songs mm -hmm. you recommend we listen to to just get a sense of what this music is about and get a really good feel for the group? 
Yeah, I mean, K-pop, you know, at, at its core, it does stand for Korean pop. And, and BTS, really, I do does think have some, some, excellent, uh, some excellent songs. Their latest single, Idol, just dropped mm -hmm. um, hours ago. Um, there is a version with just the group and also a version with Nicki Minaj. What? So, Whoa. Yeah. Oh, so that's please huge. Please check that out. I think it's really, I think, and it's a, a really awesome song in so many ways. There's actually a lot of traditional Korean instruments in the song. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, really love that they did that, kind of showing part of their culture and, and, and um, a little more of their country. Mm -hmm. I also love the song uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. That's probably, I think, one of the most accessible songs. It has a sort of a major laser, Justin Bieber mm -hmm. vibe to it. Um, their most recent single, previous to Idol, was called Fake Love, their first top 10 single on the Billboard Hot 100. Like that, one. that one was huge. Yeah. They performed, they gave the very first live performance of it at the Billboard Music Awards yeah. just earlier this year. So that was just so huge for them um, because many K-pop acts, they're, they're giving the first performances, of course, in Korea. This kind of changed the game. They got to perform the song for the first time. There's a big, uh, there's a big deal made about the very first comeback performance for a K-pop uh, single, and they, they made it happen on, on a, a huge award show in America. So I, was, uh, I think that was a significant moment for them, yeah. too. Yeah, that's their song DNA is really big, right? That's DNA. the first one I heard, and I was like, I love this. Yeah, yeah. DNA was their very first uh, Billboard Hot 100 hit. That was a huge moment for, for them um, and the, the fan base as well. It was like a goal that they had. That BTS just keeps having bigger and better goals. They're like, yeah. oh, you know, maybe we want to chart on Billboard. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they did that, they're like, okay, maybe we want to go like number one on Billboard. <laughs> and, and they just kind of keep doing it. I mean, the fans, you know, it's all thanks to the fans and, of course, the the, the artists that inspire them to do that. Speaking of bigger goals, do you see any potential like move into movies for them or anything like that? Because Monster X was here, and when I was yeah. asking them, like, what are you guys interested in? Like, what do you with want? Them, right? Yeah, and they were like, we want a show. We want a TV show of the, the guys. And I think, you know, BTS would make an amazing Netflix series. <laughs> and Netflix is throwing money to everyone. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, why not BTS? <laughs> Check out their YouTube series. I, I was in oh. it, actually. Um, you were but, in it? Oh my God. <laughs> Just a little appearance, a little bit. That's awesome. But, um, but yeah, no, I think. I think you know there, there is a there is a demand for for a group like BTS or other K-pop acts um, similar, and I just want to see it become more ubiquitous. You know, uh, One Direction, Justin Bieber, Katy Perry; these are other huge pop acts, and, and they had movies, they had books, mm -hmm. they had magazines dedicated to them. I think the next step in just kind of becoming more ubiquitous, kind of really being that that pop phenomenon in the way that uh, I think only the biggest acts deserve is is that's the next step. Yeah. I, I do think we're going to see eventually movies, books, right. whatever it might be. A tour That's documentary could be cool. Yeah. A tour doc would be amazing. Yeah, and a I'll lot of artists it. are doing docs right now, and right. it's like you can just kind of test the waters. Yeah, BTS burned the stage on YouTube now. Well, it actually cool. documents their last, their 2017 okay, cool. um, US tour. And again, you know, these guys, they, they don't stop working. They just went on a, a stadium tour in America last year. Wow. Here they are coming back again yeah. for more state. They sold out four dates at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, wow. two dates at New York's Prudential Center. They got the City Field show. I'm just uh, yeah, they, they really don't stop, and uh, I'm proud That's of incredible. Them. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, Jeff, you are incredible. I no, love stop. Yeah, I love you breaking down all of this for us. I can tell how passionate you are. It makes uh, me want to go listen to the new album. I know. I think you With, like, should. fresh ears. Yes, love yourself answer. I, I really, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely suggest Idol. Um, I, there's a really good song I like called I'm Fine. I, I don't know if anyone here has listened to it yet. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, there's so many, there's a lot of great songs, and it's a repackage of sort of right. the past two albums, so you yes. get kind of the oh, yeah. best of the past singles, the past album tracks. It's all combined in one uh, nice little package. Well, you've given yeah. us some stuff to queue up. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank Guys, you give it up for Jeff. Yes, thank you. And go listen to the BTS album out today. All right, now moving on. Actress Dakota Johnson is Fifty Shades of Red in the trailer for her new horror flick, Suspiria. The chilling remake of the 1977 classic will have the same director as Call Me By Your Name and follows Johnson as she plays a dance student who finds herself in the midst of a suspicious coven of witches at an academy abroad. Let's take a look at the trailer. At the beginning, she gave me things. Perfect balance. Perfect sleep. Oh, she wants to get inside of me. I can feel her. Oh, she can see me. When you die, 
dance the dance of another. You make yourself in the image of its creator. I feel like I'm not even here yet. <laughs> the damn blank's incredible. One, two, three. The way she transmits her work. You have to decide. What is it you want to be for this company? There's more in that building than what you can see, Doctor. You are living with dangerous people. Three Muslims. Three God. Three Devil. Mother Tenebrarum. Mother Lacrimarum. Mother Suspiriorum. Darkness. Tears. <laughs> and sighs. You're making some kind of deal with them. I'm playing creepy ass trailers all the time. Sorry, Mel Brooks, get the shit out of here, motherfuckers! Yeah. We ordered a BTS how to be free. Um, uh, well, that was terrifying. I, I thought, you know, I song. thought the girls are mean and Mean Girls. I mean, whoa, that's a rough one. Part of that ballet coven. Um, that is scary. <laughs> Dad. I know, dad joke. Um, that was scary. Yeah. I, I thought that Regina George was nasty. Oh, uh, look at that Tilda Swins. These really being old girls, huh? That witch was, she was a, a, a real mean girl. Um, you were just saying that it gives some black swan vibes. Black swan vibes for me. That like dance studio, sexy, you might die. Yeah. It's like, when did, I thought dancing was supposed to be so happy. Why are all these no, like terrible? This act, yeah, this makes sense that ballet dancers have to join a coven in order to be successful. That's how you stay I, thin. Yeah. That's how you, right. <laughs> How you get, get ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but Tilda Swinton, I mean, has there ever been a woman more Tilda perfect to, to play a witch? Oh, so what more good. can we say about Tilda? I would say that she is arguably one of our most versatile actresses, though. Oh, yeah. Like, sometimes when I see her in a role, I don't even know it's her. She was like, in train wreck. She was, and it didn't even look like her. Yeah. It's like, because she's talk. just like a slice of white skin. Yeah. And you can just dress her up however you want. And she's want. super androgynous. So yeah. it's like you don't you don't think anything of her. She's just, she, you're like, she's a, like a palette. A palette. Yeah. A palette. Yeah. I can't hit that word at the same time. Um, yeah. And you guys think about Dakota? I don't, I don't know if I'll see. Uh, oh, Dakota, you know, she's so innocent looking mm -hmm. and sounding. She is similarly also like this like canvas that you can like draw mm -hmm. on. Right. Yeah. And then the director, Luca, is the same guy who directed Calling By Your Name. So this is a little bit different than that. <laughs> um, Slightly different. It's not going to take place in the Italian countryside and have a beautiful love affair. This is... So there might still be peaches in it. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, we... <laughs> could be. Honestly, I, I, I want that to be a signature... <laughs> yeah aspect of his films. In every film, I hope somebody fucks a peach. Oh, <laughs> if <laughs> only. It's, it's funny, but in the book, it's really such a powerful moment. And uh, I thought it was a powerful moment in the movie. It really is like, I can't even like begin to talk about the peach scene, guys. Yeah. Oh. You want to Great. No? No, it's just like him wanting to be so close to him, and everyone made a joke about it on the internet, and now it's like Aww. a peach joke, and it's like, it's really it's beautiful. It's okay, don't worry. Life yeah, is like... not that hard. <laughs> we can make a quick peach joke to lighten the mood. We can make some peach believe. Yeah, yeah don't fine. worry about it. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be all right. And, okay. and this is going to be on Amazon, right? Amazon yes. Studios, cool. Yeah, 100%. Cool, it's cool Amazon. Sure. Yeah, go team. Yeah, I think there's a lot of great hair in this trailer, and that's oh. what I'm excited about. I think everybody has really great color and length. Good observation, Shannon. Yeah. I agree with you tremendously. The hair is wonderful in this trailer. I think the hair is going to be a metaphor of some sort. Yeah, yeah I think that there's definitely going to be a scene where somebody wakes up and they're like, they chopped off all my locks! Yeah. That will absolutely yeah. happen, 100%. which is the scariest thing that I was just happen. thinking that that was a horrible wig. I was like, the, ha oh. the hair is actually quite... 
like that. Isn't the nose out? Down, down to like her. Tilda's is long black hair. Yeah. There's yeah. Like a witch. I'm into oh, that. Oh, like a witch. Like, like when I witch. watch Adam's Family, I think its hair is real. Like people have to be like, that's a wig. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, well, I'll, I'll be watching, even though I'll be scared out of my mind. I won't be watching. Okay. Yes, you will. Uh, we're gonna I'll make be, you watch. I'll like, force you to watch, you and I'll fall asleep next to exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> In other news, this is a really funny story that just happened. 100 men were taken by surprise on Sunday when a woman used Tinder to stage a pop-up dating competition and then shortly began disqualifying the men. The entire event was a publicity stunt for a viral marketing agency, which recently released a video. Let's take a look. Swipe left if you're under six feet. No tattoo chicks, yuck. If you don't work out, we won't work out. No rice, no spice. White guys only. Please be hot. So this is messed up, right? Right. But everyone seems to go along with it. But would they if someone did this in the real world? What if Natasha were to swipe right on hundreds of guys, invite them all on a date, and treat them just like we've been treating each other on Tinder? We're gonna start the elimination. Half of you people here are in relationships, so those people should leave now. Wow. Anyone under 5'10", please leave as well. No beer bellies, no long beards, no bald guys, no khakis, or is any less than six inches, you know, you gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> yeah, six any less than inches. six inches. That's a big ask, and I also think it's not fair because she wasn't considering girth, mm -hmm. and I think girth is very important, you know? Yeah. Because you can be like a four and a half and a five but and sick. still bring it. You can yeah. bring it. I, Shannon, you're yeah. absolutely right, and thank, thank you. you for saying that. I'm here for you people. <laughs> of course, thank you. No, I thought that was, I mean, I, I think it's more... Chloe. Uh, <laughs> or, oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm not even gonna, yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's, that's why I think called it's, Sick Lucas. <laughs> Thick Lucas got a tiny poo poo. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, I'm sorry. I'm not jumping in on this, Lucas. I have your back. No, like, I have your back too. I said it's great. I say I think it's beautiful and you can totally make it work. It's Lucas, huge. don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say a damn word. Let's move on. Hey, so this woman uh, did this. I don't come back from this, right? No, you don't. Don't say anything. Don't even acknowledge it. Okay, I'm trying okay, to save okay, you okay, on okay. the internet. Okay, so this woman, she did this thing to these men. I have another. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think about it? Because at first it's funny, but then you're like, it's kind of mean. Well, it's funny how she's at the beginning. She's like, I don't know if this would fly in real life. It's like, Tinder is real life, you psychopath. <laughs> you actually are meeting and talking to real people. So, right. And then she brings them out. What is this? Is This is a viral marketing campaign to say what? I think it's just like a commentary on social media and how we date and how impersonal it is and how we're selecting people on artificial, superficial things. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote the think piece about it. No, I'm joking. But like, <laughs> I, look, it is reality. Like, reality is dating on online right now. And unless she comes up with like a better solution, I don't know how like productive this is. You know? Yeah, it seems like more like calling people out. I don't think she's achieving anything, but yeah. I think it's a good point to make, and it's a point that I've made to a lot of people because I feel like, especially like when you're uh, like really specific about height, I feel like some women are. I, I met a woman who was like four eleven, and she was like, "He needs to be six two. And I was like, "That's such a waste of height on you." Yeah. I'm like, "What's going on?" Also, it's like we shouldn't require men to be like five eleven up. That's so rude. You're right. excluding a whole like bunch of men that could potentially be. You're so me. Also, my mom, when I was growing up, would always say, Danny DeVito is the best kisser. So Does I was she like, know from personal experience? Yeah. I Ooh. love no way. <laughs> Danny DeVito. I don't know what you would tell you me that. I'd I be see like, you. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the same time, now that there are these dating apps, it is kind of easy to just hone in on what it is you're attracted to. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, this was definitely a waste of time for her and all these men. <laughs> well, no, well, also, it was such an incredible operation that, that she and I'm, her partner put into it. That they, is what I would call it, an operation. An oper it was like a mission. It was a mission. Like, they, had, they, hired, they hired people to respond to the text, and when they, they called the, the number, it would direct to a voicemail. Like, it, was just, it cost money to put this yeah. on. So, I, I, you know, I kind of, like, kudos to the creativity and the, and the organization. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's more to looking at, like, how superficial we can all be. I mean, especially... I, I enjoyed it seeing men put in this position, I think, which is funny. And, and a couple of them getting mad about it, like, just so unfair to all these guys. They're like, I mean, 
you guys can speak of it. No, literally, no, like, you're my you're sister. You're the best feminist okay. at this table. I'm just saying, like, women and dear, every day, you guys have to put up with all the shit far more than we do. So the fact that she kind of did this in a public space and men had to, like, compete based off physical yeah. attributes, athletic ability, and stuff that are so superficial, really, kind of is kind of makes us, uh, puts us into a feminist perspective, which is why on Twitter people like going, they were calling her Queen Natasha. It's funny, like, I agree yeah. with you, but I didn't even read this really as like a feminist no. right. experiment. You know, the person who conducted this, or I guess came up with this idea, is the same guy who was behind that viral catcalling video. Yeah. Mm. And that one made so much more of a point about what it feels like to be a woman, and this felt sort of like, misguided and it didn't have the pointed outcome that that one did. I agree. To me, it's kind of mean because I don't know if you've been on these dating apps. I have. It's a very vulnerable experience, yeah. especially if you're taking it seriously. Yeah. So the New York Times actually did a write-up about this and one of the guys was like, I was really excited to meet her. She was beautiful. I was surprised she was even interested in me. And then he has to show up and be publicly embarrassed and it all be captured on camera and then thrown on the internet. That's sad. Like, I just think like in this sort of forum, people are putting themselves out there and it's not a joke to them. So that it can be kind of harsh if you we're showing up trying to like meet somebody to have a relationship right. with. And yeah. there's probably other avenues that are less impersonal than Tinder that you can use that can bond over intellectually and less on physical traits. Like when you yeah. go on Tinder now, like that is what it is. Like you are looking at their height and this and yeah, that. True. So maybe that's kind of taking it to Tinder. But also, same thing about Tinder, they're doing, they're doing like Tinder U, that's like um, Tinder service just for college students mm -hmm. or whatever. You have to have like an EDU email and like be near campus or on campus or whatever. Yeah. Except like if you're in New York City, like Columbia, Fordham, NYU all connects, so you can, you're anywhere. I'm yeah. just saying but. that I still have my University of Nebraska email. Oh, oh. Cougar on the loose! <laughs> Our studio was right by NYU, <laughs> and I like them young, so. Is there That's one not true? I don't like them young is at there, all. I like yeah. old ass dudes. The other day we were fighting, uh. and you were like, ew, I'm 27, too young. Uh. I know, I like I'm Tom like, Cruise, remember? If yeah. there was a Tinder U, I would never download it. Literally, that is a nightmare to have to date college age people. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I think it's just for hopefully. I think for college people to meet other college age people. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Not fifty year old men. <laughs> oh God, I hope but not. I, but so in I college, could, I didn't want to date co like college age guys. Right. I could see it being like that. <laughs> I did. You don't want to date the host guy. of Jeopardy? No. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you a good him. safe haven for people who might feel unsafe. Yeah. On dating apps, like especially if you're in the city and like people are just like constantly trying to like lie to you and like take you home. Right. <laughs> but other than that. I don't know, like you can just, it's just like an extra precaution because you can yeah. change the age range on, right. the, on these apps, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. Okay, well, good anyway. Uh, the New York Public Library wants you to read more books. On Instagram, the library recently launched Instant Novels, a new program that converts classic novels to eye-catching interactive Instagram stories. The first story in the series, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, is already available on the library's Instagram page with several more stories to come the next few months. Ooh. What? This is so lazy. Yeah. I actually think it's so, like, I hate when, like, places, like, try and, like, join social media like they're a person. Like, when E! News is on Instagram, they're, like, commenting on stuff. Like, love it. Now the New York Public Library is on Instagram being like, read this. It's, like, so weird. Like, it's such a slutty thing for the New York Public Library to do. It's, yeah, like, it's the New York so, Public yeah. Library is whoring itself out for likes. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And that's right. why Lucas is behind this movement. I'm, totally, yeah. I'm all for it. Resident the, slut. Resident <laughs> slut Lucas is behind New York Li Public Library doing it. I mean, this is, it just, I get it's trying to get people to read books, but I don't think that 12-year-old on Instagram is like, oh, look at this, I hold down the story and there's a page? What's this, a page? Yeah. I could read a story? But is it the actual book or is it just yeah. like so, like, so, so It's just like a, a page of a, a book. Page. So like the, the, the animation like acts it out and then you hold it down, the page of the book will but come out. But not the whole book. I don't think so. Base roughly, excerpts. I guess they sum like, it up. Like yeah, they, excerpts of books. Right. Yeah, they kind of sort sum up the story in like 12 inch stories yeah. or whatever. Huh, I mean, it's in, I don't know. What's That's going nice. on? I guess it's, it's like kind of yeah, it's kind of turning it into like a kids' version of the right. book. It's like this is now only five pages. You can get it, <laughs> but isn't like okay? They're encouraging people to read, right. but even if you're reading text messages or Twitter, aren't you still getting all the benefits <laughs> of reading? Am I wrong? I'm not a scientist, mm, right. but like if you're using your eyes to take in the letters and be like, I am understanding thoughts that another person put into motion, like isn't that what it is? I guess I so. I think what reading does is ignite your imagination. Right. Mm. So but my reading. imagination is overactive. Yours is yeah. overactive. So I you need to need read it. like the dictionary and just be like, so that's what empanada means. <laughs> what? What are the books like? I know empanada like mom. some classic novels, they republish them with a, like yeah. a certain title that makes them easier to read, like some parts are taken out. 
song. Right. It's like a children's version. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Do you know what that's called? The children's version. Okay, I don't know. But I, my grand, when I was in 11th grade, that's not, that's not really young. My grandma sent me an uh, like a children's version of Jane Eyre, but I didn't know it was the children's version. And I was like walking around school, like holding it, being like, I'm reading Jane Eyre. <laughs> and then I remember my friend was like, you're reading like the remedial version. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? And I was like so humiliated. Yeah. I, so this might have been good for you. Know. Right, it would have been good yeah. for you. I think it's funny, this is like one thing where like if you would talk to like a conservative, they'd be like, we don't need to waste government money. Like this is the example of like public library using money to animate videos, post on Instagram, make it interactive. I mean, it is so creative and new, but it's such like the antithesis of what anyone who like doesn't like big like government spending. So whatever. Or I'm, maybe it's huh. a way to get people into the arts, no, and I'm for, culture, hey. have yeah. them expand their horizons. Yeah. I think it's cool. No, if public library do whatever you want with the money you got, <laughs> I, I'm all for it. Maybe some some kid will be like, let me get, actually go buy the book. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if I, like reading books on Instagram, I think it'd be very hard. I'd like to hold it. Yeah. Well, you know who probably likes to read? What? Our next guest. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Mandy Narayan is currently starring in the Broadway musical Getting the Band Back Together, which is now playing at the Belasco Theater in New York City. In the show, Manu brings together three of his many talents as an actor, singer, and musician while playing the role of Robbie, one of the band's members. Let's take a look at a clip. Everyone put your hands together for Manu Narayan. Do you like to read books on Instagram? I have, I just heard that. Yeah. I'm gonna go home and read one. Yeah. 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 Alice in Wonderland is available on Instagram. Really? I don't know if you've ever read it or heard about it before, but uh, it's on Instagram sounds now. Sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should just ask for all of your scripts to be put into Instagram, Instagram form. Yeah. Yeah. Like a quick way but to learn. highlighted already yeah. so yeah, exactly. that I can learn it. That'd be all right. great. So let's talk about this show. It just debuted. It's getting really great reviews. Yep. Uh, what's it like being a part of this project for you? Um, I've been with it for about 10 years. Uh, we uh, started it, it was a bunch of improv actors who got together in a room and and um, came up with the script and the storyline. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a Will Ferrell movie musical. <laughs> I love it. On Broadway, uh, about a rock band, about a guy who goes back to Jersey and gets his rock band back on with his high school uh, bandmates. So it's a lot of fun. The mm -hmm. music's great. I get to play clarinet, saxophone, sing, dance, act. All of the things I trained to do when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. so. It's all being put to good use now, which is Absolutely. great. Absolutely. It's like everything coming together in yeah. one show. So wait, it just debuted, though, like recently, like yeah, over like a week ago. Yeah, two Mondays ago. But you're saying 10 years. So this has been a labor of love. Yeah. I, look, getting any show to Broadway is a huge endeavor, mm -hmm. especially when you don't have the um, uh, a sort of brand name behind it, whether totally. it's Pretty Woman or Shrek or something like that, or huge, huge stars. We have Mary Lou Henner, who's yeah, been here. She was and just here. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, but other than that, it's all original music. It's uh, an original script. It's not based on anything. So it takes some time. Mm -hmm. And you do a lot of workshops. You do an out-of-town tryout, which we did at George Street Playhouse in New Jersey, New Brunswick. Um, about four years ago, and now we're here on Broadway. Thanks. That's so awesome. It must feel like you've been waiting for this for so long that you're finally on. Uh, Absolutely. Show on Broadway. Yeah, it feels uh, great. Um, tell us a little more about your role specifically in the show. Yeah, well, I'm. I play Robbie Patel. He's a dermatologist, uh, <laughs> and he plays keyboards. He's in the band, uh, and it's kind of cool because he's a first generation, like I am, mm -hmm. first generation American. I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Delmont, Pennsylvania uh, is where I grew up. Oh, Delmont. Get Delmont. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so it's very similar to my story. My parents came from India. Robbie's pa uh, dad came from India. And there is uh, the cultural expectation of following that culture, mm -hmm. uh, which is woven into the script in a funny way. And there is the person who wants to assimilate and be an American and all the things that America has to offer, including rock bands. So those are the things that Robbie's struggling with. Definitely. So what inspired you to get into acting and also like how did you choose Broadway? 
Uh, How'd you get into Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd always been a, a fan of Michael Jackson and stuff growing yeah. up, and yeah. weirdly in Western Pennsylvania. All four of us it, love it, yeah. Michael Jackson, Jackson. Big right? Fans, so. Right, yeah. Huge. Um, and uh, <laughs> I get to do that in the show yeah. every night. Oh, really? Uh -huh, do you yeah. grab your crotch? Uh, I don't. They oh. sanitize oh. that. They yeah. sanitize you should. That. Damn. You can do it for the show if you want right yeah. now. You can do it right, yeah. <laughs> 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 there we go. That was very good. Thank you. You'd be proud of that. Thank you. <laughs> we'll gif uh, that for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. we'll blast that. that. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, uh, but I grew up listening to country and, country and western music as well. Okay. So I love Willie Nelson. I mean, he's a, a hero of mine. Um, and uh, I had always wanted to be on stage. I've always been gregarious, talking to people. Um, and my parents really fostered a support and love mm -hmm. of the arts in me and got me to the lessons that I needed to go to. And here I am. Yeah. What instruments do you play again? Saxophone, uh, clarinet, um, keyboards in the show. So, yeah. Uh -huh. And you talked to your character is a first generation um, Indian American, like you are, and also you were in Bombay Dreams, which was yeah. the first all South Asian cast on Broadway. So, how important do you use representation on Broadway in particular? It's huge. Again, growing up in uh, Pittsburgh at the time I did, there was nobody like me mm -hmm. on TV. You just mentioned Big Bang Theory. Now mm -hmm. Kunal's on Big Bang, mm -hmm. yeah. Bang Theory. So there are people like me or like us represented on major um, TV shows or movies or things like that here. But when I was growing up, there wasn't. So Bombay Dreams really, to me, was one of the first things in a wave of things that now we're seeing the fruition right. of. Uh, and every night on stage, you know, being the lead of that show and both celebrating Broadway and musicals, mm -hmm. but also celebrating our culture parts of our culture and South Asian culture on stage and seeing young kids who were like me, maybe eight or nine South Asian kids, looking up with wonder and seeing themselves reflected on stage and then looking out into the audience and seeing that most of the people in the audience were not like them. Right. Mm -hmm. They were the majority Americans, whether they were white, black, but they were not first generation Americans and loving the show. I think that was a really, really important moment for me and also culturally for South Asians in this yeah. country. I think it's also you're playing multidimensional characters. You're not playing a stereotype. And I read a, an interview with you once, and you, you said the challenge is seeing yourself first and then making other people see that. So you yeah. don't have to fit inside a box. No, that, I mean, that's the truth, right? Like, uh, as, an act, as actors, we're always forced into boxes, whether that's by our agents, whether that's by what the choices that are given to us, um, who hires us. But the real challenge as actors, I think, for any of us, no matter what we look like, because when you're the leading man type, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, you still are put in a box. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep yourself outside of that box? It's only through your imagination and tenacity and making sure that you see yourself as others do, but also beyond what others see you as yeah, and that. strive for something else. <laughs> Um, beyond the theater, you've been in film, TV, The Love Guru, Nurse Jackie, <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. Um, I'm curious how you compare the two and what you sort of see in uh, you know, your future, for your future projects. Um, it's acting, if you talk to actors, acting is yeah. similar whether you're on stage or whether you're in a, a film set or a TV set. But the culture around that is different, right? Um, a TV set, everything kind of goes very quickly. Uh, and especially if you're coming in as a guest star, right. you sort of have to fit in to these long-running shows like Law & Order SVU or Nurse Jackie or, and do your job very quickly and then move on. So it can be, for me, stressful, right. a TV show. Yeah. A movie, on the other hand, when I was in The Love Guru and I was there from the you know, pre-production through the last shot, I was the last shot, so I was there right. the entire time. That is much more like doing a, a play or a musical because you're there and you create a especially if you're on location, you have a group of people who are all there doing the same thing. So in that way, the culture is similar. I love doing films. Yeah. Um, it's so much fun. Yeah. It's a little slower paced. You can take your time. Um, the acting is satisfying, as is doing stage. I love doing stage yeah. as well. What I'd love to do, I mean, I'm right now currently on hiatus on a Bollywood movie. Uh -huh. um, called Sabash Naidu or uh, Sabash Kundu, depending on which language you <laughs> see the movie in. It's in three languages. Amazing. Um, with the great Kamal Hassan mm -hmm. in uh, uh, India. So we're waiting to start shooting that again. That'll be a huge, huge thing, because um, one billion people, yeah. two billion eyeballs on that will be amazing. <laughs> um, and then hopefully get my own TV show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Put that out there. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah.
I and, want to go with yeah. that. Yeah. And, and then star on Broadway again. I mean, like that, this is a dream come true. The, um, when you're on Broadway, I'm always curious about like the schedule of it. Yeah. So how many shows a week is that? We're doing eight shows a week. Okay, so that's eight shows a week. Is that uh, seven days a week? Or it's six days a week, so we get one day off. <laughs> um, but the, to do a Broadway musical, I don't think many people know this, you're singing live every show. Mm -hmm. You're dancing live every show. Um, you are acting. And then on the days off, you do press stuff uh, like this to promote the show. Right. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And our show especially is amazing because it's a rock musical. So we're like rocking out. And the audiences are loving it. They're laughing. It's, I would say it's the funniest show on Broadway right uh -huh. now. Um, people keep saying how their cheeks hurt when they're done watching the show. Uh, but for us, it's very grueling. Like, I've been dealing with bronchitis. Mm -hmm. But you get the medicine, and you have you to keep it. going on. Yeah, I mean, I would be like, I don't really want to do it tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love your head. But when your paycheck show, comes, like, yeah, you'll sure. be like, no, I should <laughs> probably do it tonight. Um, we actually have a question from your, one of your cast members, JT. Oh, yeah. He wants to <laughs> So who won the last Super Bowl between the Steelers and the Cowboys? <laughs> and we're supposed to look at your face when you answer this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a jerk. <laughs> it was not the Steelers. <laughs> yeah, you that's want, hilarious. You want us to ask that? Yeah, I knew it was going to be about sports. <laughs> yeah. he, he texted me. I think right? the hashtag was the boys, the boys the, getting Broadway. the band back together, love sports. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broadway boys who love yeah, sports. Yeah, Broadway boys who love sports. Yeah, there's a bunch of. Cowboy fans and oh, really? asks I've been in before, yes. Uh, oh, that's funny. You guys are on Broadway, so you need to constantly amp each other up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, 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 right. I exactly. love that. Yeah. I love how sports infiltrating Broadway. That's actually a great um, storyline to this whole interview. Yeah, and we totally have a fantasy yeah. football league starting up. So I can't wait. Our that's draft fantastic. is like in two weeks. Can that's I join? Awesome. Can I join it? You want to? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That'll be fun. I don't really like sports. We're not big sports people. <laughs> yeah, we're really, no, I see. No, it's like there's mixed messages. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you can Thank catch you me guys. in Getting the Band Back Together, now playing at New York's Belasco Theater. On a different note, we'll be taking a break off for a few days, but you can still listen to the Build Brunch podcast on iTunes and check your favorite episodes at the Build buildseries.com slash brunch. We'll see you guys on Wednesday, September 5th. Same time, same table. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Woo!